Welcome to this video for Module 7 of Course 10981. During this particular video we'll actually look at configuring the Virtual Machine Manager library. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add library shares to VMM and then enable data deduplication in each of the shares so we reduce the stories the library takes up. We'll then look at actually adding an additional library server and configuring synchronization of objects across the library server. So the first PowerShell script we've got here allows us to create a new share called a datum in e colon backslash shares a datum. It then grants access to the uh, administrators groups with full control and then it actually creates a subfolder called virtual hard disks inside the a datum shared folder. So pretty simple script. Uh, obviously what we'll do is we'll just jump out to uh, the graphical tools and look at how we would achieve this graphically. So if we just load server manager, as we go into server manager, if we go to the files and storage services and come down to the shares section, we can actually see the list of shares that exist and we can just walk our way through the wizard. So we're going to pick uh, LUN LS1 as the machine that we want to create the share on. We could then obviously pick the drive uh, that we want to create the share on and we and uh, progress. So if we can hit next, so the share name as we saw from the script we're going to call a datum so that will also create a subfolder under the eShares a datum folder. We can define any uh, permission rules so we're going to actually enable uh, access based enumeration so you can only see uh, objects if you have permissions to them and we can also go in and customize the permissions if we want to make any changes. So we can make those changes if needed. So we're actually going to make a small change. So we're going to select the principle that we want to make a permission change to or add into the permissions list. So we're actually going to add in the Adatum administrators and the Adatum administrators are going to be given the full control permission. So we'll save those changes and press next in the wizard and then so that will go and create the share for us and set the security as we wish it to be set so hopefully you can see there is the uh, a datum share on LS1 in the list hopefully if we just prove connectivity so LS1 E dollar, we can see the shares folder, we can see the datum folder that's been created underneath it. So we're just going to go and take the last part of that PowerShell script and we're going to go and create a folder called virtual hard disks. So this is what that uh, new hyphen item command did that we saw in the PowerShell script. So we've effectively now graphically achieved all the results that the PowerShell script had. So let's go and have a look at a, a second PowerShell script and see what this script is going to do for us. So you can see this script is actually going to enable the dedupe service on drive E. Okay. It's also then going to um, copy some objects in there so and, and then initiate the, the dedupe process. So the idea being we can actually start to see how much disk space we can start to save. So we're going to copy some VHDs in which have the same content in and then hopefully see the dedupe engine kick in and, and achieve the storage results we're after. This is going to have some delays, obviously the dedupe is going to take a little while. So again we could have done this obviously from the PowerShell command just by running it. Alternatively what we can do is we can obviously do this graphically. So we go down to drive E on the LUN-LS1 server, so library server 1. And we can currently see there's no reference really to uh, dedupe being enabled. So we're going to right click on the object and hit configure deduplication. So in the drop down box at the top where data uh, deduplication is disabled, we're actually going to change that to general purpose file server. There is a VDI option in there specifically obviously for VDI scenarios. We're actually going to get the system to sort of effectively dedupe immediately. We're not going to wait for files to reach a certain age. So we're going to set the age to zero. Okay. So um, it should generally start to dedupe de pretty quickly when it finds the possibility of reducing the storage. But we will fire the job off manually just to make sure that we get effectively a medium response. So what we need to do is we need to start sort of generating some duplicate data so we can start to see some savings. So we're just going to copy a file from the Contoso 
uh, shared folder on there into the Adatum virtual hard disks folder. So this will take a few seconds to copy and we'll come back once the copy process is complete. As we can see the copy process is just coming closely to an end. Once this is finished we will actually copy the file again and paste it back in. We'll jump to the end of the copy but the reason we're doing this is we're now going to have about three copies of this eight and a half gigabyte file on the volume so when we initiate the dedupe job we're going to initiate it just to speed things up we should see that we get a dramatic uh, saving in disk space so the second copy process is just coming near to completion so we've actually got somewhere in excess of 25 gigabytes of VHD file because these three files were effectively the same the one drive E and then the, the two others so we're just going to jump out to a PowerShell prompt and we're actually going to remotely initiate the deduplication job on the LUN LS1 server. So we're just going to use the enter PS session and connect across to LUN LS1. And so therefore any commands we now type will actually be run directly on the LUN LS1 server. So we're going to run the start hyphen dedupe job. The type of job we're going to run is optimization, so we want to improve the storage. And then on the volume is going to be drive E, because that's the, the drive we want to turn or optimize. Um, and obviously the system would do this in the background normally, but we're just invoking the uh, job at this precise moment. So you can actually see effectively the job has been uh, listed as state of queued. So if we do a get hyphen dedupe uh, uh, job command, hopefully this will report back and tell us that the deduplication job is actually now running. Okay. Obviously this is going to take a little while. Um, we can actually see 0% uh, progress at the moment. So no surprise when we look at the status, you'll see that there's no disk space saving at this precise moment. So zero optimized files, zero save space. If we give this a little while, if we then start to run the commands again, we will start to see the optimization. So we could obviously monitor how far through the pro uh, process we are, we'll also be able to monitor how much space we're saving. So if we do the get dedupe job again, okay, you can still see we're running, we've still got sort of 0% uh, progress, so again we haven't really sort of saved anything, so we're still at that point where there's no information. So obviously a lot of this is down to the disk performance, the uh, an analysis we're, we're performing, but when it actually starts to get some savings, you'll actually start to see those savings add up pretty quickly. So there we go. We can actually see with the D, we're now actually over 20% through the job. And we can actually see we've optimized uh, one file. Um, we've actually detected there's actually five files that are in policy. And we've actually so far saved 4.23 gigabytes of space. We should now be approaching the end of the deduplication process. So if we just go and run the dedupe job again we can now see that a uh, hundred percent we can see the job status has completed so hopefully we should see how well we've done so we can actually see that we've saved 21 or over 21 gigabytes of disk space and optimized five files one of the things that uh, the server manager tool does it will actually show you this information graphically so if we go back into server manager and hit the refresh button we will actually see the deduplication rate uh, page actually sort of updates so we'll actually see sort of that zero percent change we should see obviously the amount of space we're saying and disk space we've saved change and we should see the bar graph sort of reflect that status change so we'll just wait a few seconds for server, server manager to refresh that data for us and there we can see the same sort of numbers as we saw within the PowerShell command prompt we're just going to go in and just clean that file up and uh, we're now ready for um, our next stage. So let's go and look at the next script file, so the task free script file. So this is the script file which is actually going to show how we would actually add that library share into Virtual Machine Manager. So it's pretty straightforward, just um, the add SC library share and then the share path, the path that you want to actually add. So pretty simple command that needs to be run. So we'll just connect it across to Virtual Machine Manager and we will perform those tasks graphically. So it's a very simple wizard as we will actually see. So we'll just clean up the desktop a little bit while we're waiting for Virtual Machine Manager to load. There we go. If we go into the library servers, LUN LS1, we can see we've got the Contoso share listed there already 
and obviously we can see the folder structure below if we needed to but to add library shares actually pretty straightforward just add library share and then select the shares that you want to add. Notice that hidden shares are not shown, the ones with dollars on the end. There was a tick box there that you could have added hidden shares in if you wanted to as well. Okay, so very quick step to actually go and add a library share in, very, very quick. So jumping back to our PowerShell scripts, let's open up the next script. So this script is actually going to go and retrieve the VHD file we've just copied onto the library server and it's then also going to go and update some configuration information about it. So this is all labels and tags. So we're going to go and change the family name, the release version and then the operating system name. So these are just values we're going to go and set. So we're going to go into Virtual Machine Manager. We're going to find the VHD. So we're going to go to the Virtual Hard Disks folder in a datum will go to the properties of the VHD file and there you can actually see the, the family name columns and so on. So what we can actually do in here is we can set those values. So the PowerShell command would do exactly the same as this. And this then becomes quite important because it allows us to use these labels as a way to reference objects in different library servers. So if the files have different names for example we can still make sure that the system recognizes them as containing the same operating system and that then becomes quite important when you start to import and export service templates for example. So we'll go and set what the family name we would like. We would go and pick the release because obviously that's a release for us in terms of you know we might have different releases because of um, different patch levels for example. Obviously the operating system name is a, a fixed value from VMM that we select from the drop down box. So that's going to set all of those values against the VHD file for us. So what we're now going to do is we're now going to add a new library server. So we've hit the add library server button in, in the library panel and we're actually going to specify the run as account. So remember the library server has an agent on it so we need permissions to install software. So library server uh, number two is the library server we're, we're actually looking for. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, type in lun-ls to hit search and it will just come back as library server two. Obviously number one's not returned because it already is a library server. So hopefully we can just press next and this will have worked out what shares exist on it and we can then choose whether we want to bring those shares in under management as well. So we'll select the adatum share. So this does take a, a little while, just purely because we've got to go and deploy that agent. So you can see we've got the add library share job, and we just need to wait for that job to complete. So that job shouldn't take no more than about 60 seconds to complete. Okay, so the library server has been added successfully. So we'll switch back to the library panel, and we'll just make or just confirm what we believe. So we can see that library server 2 has now been added. We can see that it has the shared folder of datum, which was all what we selected when we went through the wizard. It's just on library server 1, the datum folder has a virtual hard disks folder, and then there is a file in there, the base 14a. And none of that exists on server 2, so there's no subfolder called virtual hard disks, there's no content. So we want to synchronize up the library servers. So we have a script here, a bit of PowerShell script, which is actually going to go out look at each of the library servers, so obviously our library servers are actually named in the file and then it's going to compare the content and effectively provide a mechanism to copy content from the LS1 library server to the LS2 library server and it will allow us to effectively keep those in sync. So it would be a way, you know, this script could be the basis of um, keeping library servers in sync so you could run this as a, an out of hours operation or depending on how often your library server content changed you could maybe run it more frequently than that even maybe as a scheduled task okay so we're actually just going to quickly take a copy of that and actually sort of paste that onto the physical machine that I'm sitting in front of to make it a little bit easier to run it so we're going to open a PowerShell prompt once the PowerShell prompt is loaded with all the Virtual Machine Manager extensions, we will switch to that location, so just the root of drive C, and we will then run the, pa the PowerShell script. The script, of course, will take a while to run, just purely because, again, we're copying that large 8.5 gigabyte file, same as we did in the previous demonstrations. So we'll come back once the file copy process is com completed. 
So we're just coming to the end of the copy process now and we can see effectively the system's also reading all of the properties from the file that we set and copying those properties across to the new copy of the file. So the operating system, the family, the version, those parameters have all been copied across. So when we switch into Virtual Machine Manager, not only should we see the folders being created, the files being copied across, but we should also see those additional extended properties have been set against the copy of the file on the Adatum shared folder on Library Server 2. So there's the folder, there's the VHD, and we can see clearly there in the list those properties have been set, but if we open up the properties we can see the family, the release and the operating system. You can also see they've been marked as equivalent resources. So effectively the system is saying I actually recognize those as being the same file on two on two different servers. So that means that if we do export objects from one server to another, um, the system will be able to work out which VHDs to connect them to. And this becomes quite powerful when the objects actually have different names. So if they have you've used different naming conventions on different servers. So this concludes the video for the lab for module 7 of course 10981 where we looked at adding library shares, enabling deduplication on those library shares and then effectively adding an additional library server and synchronizing the content.